Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. This is not my last broadcast, narrowcast, webcast, podcast, radiocast of the year, but it's starting to feel a lot like it. Stocks are sinking on worries of Omicron. Omicron. And the fate of Biden's agenda. May it rest in peace. Trump was able to sweep into office on a little bit of a populist vote and rock up the world of taxes, slashing corporate taxes. Biden swept in on, aren't we tired of this guy showing up and kind of looking like a buffoon in international politics? And Biden's agenda has not got to the the go ahead that the Trump agenda had. I'm not to say he hasn't accomplished anything, but Wall Street certainly makes you feel that way. Stocks are falling hard today as COVID-19 variant Omicron is spurring new lockdowns in Europe. You know what they say, right? What happens in Europe comes to America. No, they don't actually say that. I just made that up. But it's kind of true. I'm completely expecting massive hospital stories through the Christmas break, not to depress you and your family, not to go, the heroes, the doctors and nurses are heroes. And trust me, that is a noble job. Anytime someone takes my blood pressure or puts a needle in my arm, I'm wildly appreciative because I don't know how to do that. I don't think I don't have the heart for it. But those stories are coming. Senator Joe Manchin, who let's just use, start right there. His name's Joe. How many people do we name no named Joe? It's a dying name. Here he is, the most powerful senator in the United States. In large part, because he's a swing vote. He happens to be a a Democratic senator in a very Republican state. If you ever go to West Virginia, there's nothing going on. There's nothing. There's nothing going on in in West Virginia. It's one of those states you, you don't even drive through because there's too many mountains. You don't notice it because there's no jobs. You're like, oh, my my cousin lives there and he works right. No, 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 no. There's nothing going on. It's tiny. His population is teeny. And he's become Joe Biden's thorn. And if you've ever read, it, read any biblical stories or Disney movies, you know about the big lion that roars that has a thorn stuck in its paw and someone comes along and helps it. He is the thorn and it's not come out of, out of Biden's paw. It's stuck there. Fascinating, right? Who would have predicted this? Like Tom Clancy can't write crazy stuff like this. Stock market is down sharply with global shares amid negative COVID headlines around the world. The Netherlands announced new lockdowns on Sunday. Germany is going to place a travel ban on people coming into the country from the UK. Ireland imposed new lockdowns. I kind of feel that if you're going to see a holiday show, you better do it soon. The Rockets canceled for the rest of the year. The Rockets canceled. Okay. If you want to see my, my, my nine layers of hell, somewhere around the nine layers of hell, like ninth layer is not that bad. That's cruise lines for me. Probably the eighth line of hell is, I don't know. But when you start getting the top five lines of hell, it's going to a rocket show. I, if you ever catch me at a rocket show, trust me, I'm a miserable human being. I've sold out everything I believe in to go, oh, it's a rocket. Oh, they're going to do their big kick now. It's a big holiday kicker finale. Oh, it's the Rockets. The Rockets canceled. Shows like Hamilton have said, we're going dark for the holidays in New York City. I'm not talking West Virginia right now. I'm talking New York City. For the year, the NASDAQ's up 17.7%. The S&P 500's up 23%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 15%. T 
10 year treasury sits at 1.4%, which is again, I think in the last quarter of the year, maybe half the year, we kind of started saying 1.4 means, oh no, we're talking pandemic. 1.6%, we're like, oh, the numbers are looking good. We're coming out of the pandemic. We're 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 starting to fly, we're starting to cruise. One five has kind of been Goldilocks right in the middle. So one four is like we're back in the world of Omicron. Moderna vaccine booster increases antibodies against Omicron 37 fold. I'll take that and a bucket of chicken for a dollar. Elon Musk is going to pay over 11 billion in taxes this year. He's a weird dude, but dang it if I don't love him. Christmas is only days away. The number of passengers traveling is double what it was last year. Nearly 4.3 million people passed through airport security checkpoints on Friday. I'm at the point now, I'm like, is, is my driver's license still valid? <laughs> like, I'm still not there yet, but I'm starting to think about it. Triple A, not one A, not double A, but triple A. Quad A would be too much A. Triple A is perfect. They said their forecast for air travel is expected to jump 184% for the Christmas and New Year's holiday. Are you traveling? Are you at all worried about Omicron? Are you buying into what media people like me are saying that, yeah, this one, this, this variant seems to be less deadly, but much more transmissible. <laughs> A lot of young people had to live through the sexual revolution and learn about STDs and go, oh, that's the one that's not so bad. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people I know have chlamydia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that where we are now with COVID that it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have chlamydia, i.e. I have chlamydia. Please don't turn this into an audio sounder. I'm begging you. I can already see it right now. Rob Black and your money. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got chlamydia. (laughs) Please don't. Um, So 110 million people are going to travel 50 miles or more between December 31st, 23rd and January 2nd. It feels like COVID is kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sexual disease. I, I might have it. And yeah, 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 yeah. I might give it to you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of feeling like that now, right? We're tired. We're putting our protections down. My mom died of not chlamydia. <laughs> Rob Black's mom died of chlamydia. Oh, the sounders that I'm making up in my own head. You, you don't understand how this stuff comes back to haunt you. So a lot of people are getting ready to travel. Stock market's having a lovely year. Spider-Man No Way Home scores the third best haul ever. 253 million bajillion dollars. No, just the million, not the bajillion, but 253 million dollar haul. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Spider-Man. I got got COVID and died. That's where we are right now. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Resources to help you manage your money. Visit robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Questions about how to invest in your retirement? Check out robblackshow.com and get in on the conversation. Subscribe to the podcast and video channels. No one cares more about your money than you do. It's time to start to feel good about your financial future. robblackshow.com. RobBlackShow.com. COVID has world markets on edge. Just a few weeks ago in October, we looked at the numbers dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. And then Thanksgiving hit, and we've seen the numbers spike and arrive. New York State alone reported 22,000 new cases, highest daily total of the pandemic. Uh, The good news, we're much better off than we were a year ago at handling this kind of thing. Better tools to reduce individual risk. 
people that wanted to get vaccinated, the people that wanted to be safe. But remote life is back. Inflation fears are sticking around. That's kind of the end of the year messaging. With each COVID wave, consumers have shifted their disposable income from in-person services. No movie theaters, no amusement parks, to durable things like appliances and electronics. So we are pushing cost of goods higher. So we are spending. There's a massive labor shortage in the United States to tune up 3.2 million American adults. They're not working because they fear getting sick and central bankers expect a new wave of inflationary pressures to arrive. The Fed has said inflation is not transitory. They wanted to use that word in their words as a, well, we used to have low labor short. Oh, we used to have low labor numbers, employment numbers. And it led to no inflation. So when we got back to those low labor numbers, it'll lead to no inflation, but they're wrong. If that's your excuse, you're wrong. The United States is not going into lockdown, although Joe Biden is going to have a big speech tomorrow about Omicron. And I have to wonder if big lockdowns are coming down. Economists have reduced their first quarter growth estimates from 5% to 3% with pressure coming from reduced international travel. Joe Manchin is now enemy number one to the Democratic cause or the Biden agenda. As the Build Back Better deal is not going to get done this year. So if you're looking for a little more tickle me stimulus, Oh, tickle me stimulus. <laughs> not coming. Do not put that into a sounder. <laughs> Traders were amongst the first people back at work in the finance industry because it's hard to replicate the hustle of the trading floor. Um, and they've all been sent home, just like Apple sent all their employees last week that their return date is now been pushed to we have no freaking freaking idea. Delta seemed to be contained and Omicron came out and said, hey, hey guys, look at me. Um, I'm super contagious, not super lethal. Hey, hey I, I don't have that bad of a breath, but I'm super contagious. The Netherlands of it has entered a full blown lockdown until mid-January. France, Germany, have banned travelers from the UK, Canada, asking its citizens not to travel, and Israel is closing its borders for at least two weeks. It might be Christmas this year, or it might be Groundhog Day Christmas this year. I'm supposed to travel, and it's still a coin toss in my family's head. Just throwing that down for you. What a year. Are you with me against me? Because you have to pick a side. This is a civil war. Spider-Man had quite the week. No, quite the weekend. Eh, eh, eh. No way home. No way home. If you're watching Peter Parker, it's no way ham. Peter Porker, Peter Porker scored 334 million internationally score a $587 million global haul. Like what, what, what? $253 million domestically. Like this is as legit, too legit, too legit to quit. Will it be Spider-Man super spreader event? I haven't watched, but I'm about to spoil the movie for you in three seconds, two seconds, one second. Turn off your radio. I haven't watched it. Okay, you can turn your radios back on. It scored $253 million domestically. What, what, what? So the only thing I can tell you is Tom Holland's like three feet tall. 
He could have been in that Hobbit movie. He could be in the new Hobbit series with Amazon. He's tiny. He's tiny. But that man can fill, put butts in seats. Him and Zendaya. Uh, let's just say that Zendaya can wear a dress. She is in every Yahoo feed right now of Zendaya wears a spider man dress. Zendaya wears a plunging dress. Zendaya wears her hair is uncut. All right. Zendaya wears uh, a booger on her nose. And like you click on it because that lady can wear a dress. Whoa. So Peter Parker can fill seats. Zendaya can wear a dress. Spider Man cruise the best opening weekend of the pandemic by a long shot. Um, it's nice to see. But for the movie industry to know that they're truly back, they need one more thing post-pandemic. They need a non-superhero movie to do just as well. To have us all excited. The Matrix comes out this week. It'll be nice. And it'll be Peter Parker-esque. But the movie industry, in order to survive, really needs a hit. They can I don't want to say count on maybe something quite like that, but close. They need something on the independent side. The first data available for Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine suggests a third booster dose will be effective against Omicron. Yay. Moderna's stock is moving higher today on that news. At least 44 people on board Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas ship that ended a seven-day cruise in Miami are positive for COVID-19. Who would get on a cruise line right now? I know you've been pent up. I know you're saying, but you're willing to travel, Rob. I just hate cruise lines, to be honest with you. You get Captain Stubing? I'm in. No Captain Stubing? I'm out. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. Weekend air travel nearly doubled from last year. Nearly 4.3 million people passed through airport security checkpoints. Nearly double the same as dates from last year. Are we biggity biggity back? Ooh. I want to say yes, and the numbers say yes, so I guess I'll say yes. At the same time, uh, I find myself opening my phone in the middle of the night and going, let's go to news stories on Omicron. And they're never what I want to see. It's over. Ding dong, witch is dead, the wicked witch, the evil witch. Like, it's not that. It's still kind of there. Why did Broadway cancel Hamilton for the week? What's going on, COVID, my old friend? Hello, COVID, my old friend. YouTube TV ended a Disney blackout after a new deal. A little tired of these kind of stories, aren't you? Every now and then you hear about DirecTV saying, you know, we don't really like raising prices to consumers every single year, but I guess we're doing it again because Disney wants more money or Comcast wants more money or someone wants more money. So you won't be able to watch your Walking Dead or your Disney TV shows, Hannah and Montana. It's, it's, it's inane, right? It's, and yet it keeps happening. So YouTube TV is actually one of the big stars over at Google. The number of people have cut the cord and gone with YouTube TV. Now, I don't have young children, but if I did, I'd be like, what's going on, YouTube TV? I'm counting on you to like babies my children. But they, they, they made nice and they, YouTube TV and Disney work together. Nike, Micron, BlackBerry, CarMax, all going to report numbers this week. That's kind of an interesting mix of companies. No, Nike, we get. People wear shoes, people uh, work out at home, people work out uh, back at the gym, people go road running instead of like, we get Nike, okay, right? 
LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, the king, right? We get Nike. Micron, tied towards memory of computer sticks. Um, kind of a play on the work from home, work at office, work at home, work at office. There was a little bit of stimulus from work at home. Will there still be stimulus now a year later now that we've all been working from home for two years? And some of us have gone back to work and the, the, the companies are like, hey, we need more computers because people are here again. BlackBerry, I don't understand why they're still reporting numbers, but they are. Um, yes, I understand they have a lot of technology and a lot of patents and some product they actually do sell, but I just don't understand why we care. General Mills. Have you seen a price, the price of cereal recently? Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling my kids, um, Frosted Flakes or five fifth? Like, okay, okay, Frosted Flakes it is. They're great. Consumer earnings are forecast to have risen six tenths of a percent this week. We're going to see that number on Thursday, named after the god of Thor. Also Thursday. Let's just call it Thursday for this week. Okay. Are you with me? You against me? Pick a side. Don't fight. Durable goods report for November is going to provide a window into investment spending into the economy. How much did we spend on big ticket items? Big ticket, they're called white items. Think of your washer, dryer kind of things that in the garage that look whitish. They're expected to forecast a rise of 2.1%. We also get existing home sales for November on Wednesday and new home sales for November on Thursday, Thursday. The Federal Reserve, or no, 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 the Federal Reserve. Oh, good God, I messed that one up. The conference board. The conference board is, it's kind of like we want to be the Federal Reserve, but we're not. There are a bunch of economists who get together and rubble, but because they're not the Federal Reserve, they rubble like this. Rubble, 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 rubble. They don't robble like having a material impact, but the conference board is releasing their leading economic indicators. <sighs> and it's, that's kind of how we're settling in right now. Stock market has had a crazy, crazy push with Federal Reserve starting last week. And it was, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. And today, so far, she loves me not. Fires concerns and Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin. That's exactly what Joe Biden said right now. Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin. Um, so lack of stimulus and a push of COVID. I don't even think this week we're worried about the Federal Reserve, right? Because they already said we're raising interest rates and we're going to stop being our tapering. If all data continues to remain the same, three rate hikes in 2023, 2022, who knows about 2023? We'll learn about that as the year goes on. But the markets are kind of stuck there right now. Pfizer and BioNTech, Moderna. All have said their shot is helping against Omicron. But we're also getting news again and again and again and again and again that the pandemic is going to turn into an endemic. So maybe think of the marketing advertiser we're going to see a year or two years from now of get your flu and COVID shot. Hey, flu and COVID shots are available now. Um, so a couple executives in the healthcare world have suggested that COVID to be a booster every year kind of thing. I'm good with that. When I was born, a child come kicking and screaming to the world. I probably said, you know what? Flu shots I'm good with, but COVID booster shots, no. But as I've evolved and aged and changed since I was a baby wee child, I'm okay with another shot. Having gotten three shots now uh, for COVID, my head hasn't grown any funny hair patches. I don't have anything like a weird limp. 
I don't talk like a pirate, although I do talk like a pirate sometimes when I'm trying to get my wife all like, how shall we say, baby making mode. I'm like, you're, you look pretty lady. It's just like, nope, not today. Nope. <laughs> what do you have to say? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep quiet. You wear t-shirts for a living. Not me. Um, other things to talk about. I keep going, I keep going back to um just weird headlines in my head. Like, do I really care that senators Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker have tested positive for COVID, knowing that they've been vaccinated, knowing that that's going to play in the anti-vaxxers world of like, well, see, that's why I didn't get vaccinated, because if they can get vaccinated, I, I can get vaccinated. And I just don't care. It's a flu. Take the damn shot. Chile is elected a 35-year-old leftist president. This is kind of fascinating. The rise and fall of like the Donald Trumps of the world populist movements and there's been many many and not just trump chile has elected a 35 year old leftist making him one of the world's youngest leaders part of me goes like that's kind of cool i can remember when i was 35 i was was fueled with spitfire and hate and rage and anger and i wanted to change the world knowing full well you can't change the world until you're 50 but when you're 65 you're starting to get over the whole over the age for it Then I go like, Chile, do we really need to talk about them? Because are they really a country that economically matters? And then I'm like, well, the people have spoken, right? And it just goes to show you our political party system in the world is going to be funky going forward. Like, have you ever picked up a teenager's clothes? And you're like, I don't want to smell it. I'm supposed to smell it because like, before I put it in the wash, I want to see if it's dirty or clean. Uh, but I don't want to smell it. That's the political party systems of the world right now, in my opinion. I speak only for myself. Some Googlers are considering quitting for rivals that offer permanent remote work. This is fascinating to me. I do really, really, really want to see what the Zillennials, especially the Millennials, do. We know that we got disrupted. We know that we had to work from home. Now what we're learning is hey, I actually kind of like my spouse. Hey, I can sneak in like a quick hug in between like uh, Zoom calls versus like going to the cooler and going, hey, how about the 49ers? That was a good win, wasn't it? Was it a good win or was it, did we barely squeak by? I think we're voting for family hugs versus talking about the 49ers. Amazon's retail CEO, Dave Clark, defended the company's response to the deadly tornado in an internal memo. Fast action saved lives. Last week, we learned about a tornado that killed some Amazon workers at a warehouse. And the news wasn't pretty initially, where some employees complained that they had never been trained in safety issues of what to do in case of emergency. And of course, their CEO comes out and says, hey, we, we, we saved lives. We did good. A little corporate talk there, no? I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Find us at robblackshow.com. Robblackshow.com. Minimum wage is going to rise in 21 states and 35 localities as more parts of America embrace $15 an hour. I work for Salem Media, and I'm happy and proud to do so. I think radio is one of the most magical things on the planet where you can talk into a microphone and people listen on speakers around the world. Captive audiences. I do broadcasting work, which is by way of saying I'm in radio, television, and podcast. I consider a podcast to be very narrow, whereas I consider television to be very wide. I consider radio to be a select audience that's incredibly intelligent and informed. Base hourly pay is going to climb from eleven dollars to twelve dollars in Illinois. Nine bucks and a quarter to ten fifty in Delaware. 
from $9.50 to $11 in Virginia. From $12 to $13 an hour for most workers in New Jersey. And from $10.50 to $11.50. I want to say Delaware again, but I've already said Delaware. So across the board, we're seeing spikes of income. Those don't sound like spikes, do they? Those sound like, wait, wait, wait. I'm standing behind a cash register, ringing up a sweater or ringing up some McNuggets. Or that's one of the things that has always freaked me out about minimum wage is it's meant for the entry jobs, not the entry careers. Some jobs that are entry can lead to careers. But rarely do you find the CEO of McDonald's. Oh, I once was a a fry cook. That rarely, rarely happens. I'm always happy socially when I see minimum wage rise. In the back of my head, the technologist comes out and goes, well, if they got to keep paying for these guys to drop a basket of fries into the, the grease and cook for three minutes and 32 seconds, a robot's eventually going to figure out how to do that job for them. It's a little bit of a conundrum. COVID's fascinating because people are like, I don't want to do that anymore. And it's very, very vocal. Um, in my own head, I, I, I do want to go into TV one more time. I do want to be under the big lights one more time. I do want to see the director and the producer and, and give a fist bump one more time. But after two years of doing it from home, I don't necessarily know if that's in my cards. Like, I really want to do it that much. I'm just throwing it down there for you. There's a big dangerous thing happening in America right now called buy now, pay later. It psychologically tricks us into spending money now to uh, buy something we can't afford and then figure it out later. Last week, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau announced it's collecting information on the risks of the benefits of basically glorified layaway. And let me give you my 25-year history of layaway. Before I got into financial media, I could care less. I'm like, who does layaway? Like, you can't really afford something. Like, you go to Walmart and you say, hey, I'd like a BB gun for Christmas. I'm going to spend money in the next three months and give you installments on it. And then you're going to give it to me. But you're not going to sell it to Johnny down the street. You can actually give it to me. You're going to lay it away for me. 25 years ago, very simple Rob Black said something like, um, layaway sounds like it's for poor people. Buy now, pay later sounds like it's for stupid people. And yet the whole financial industry has, has embraced it. Like every major credit card, every major fintech company is like, oh, we have to do buy now, pay now, pay later. So now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is looking into it. It's like, this is just a loan and it's an aggressively priced loan. And people need to know about that instead of this. Oh, it's a QT fintech word. Oh, it's what the zillennials do. They just do it. Just go with it. Um, when you're starting to see parents talk about, I'm going to send my kid to a boarding school and I'm going to do it in installments. You're like, oh boy. There's something I don't like about this. I don't think it's the world's greatest innovation. I think the chocolate bar was. Or maybe the hovercraft. Or maybe Adele. I don't think buy now, pay later is the greatest invention ever. A 19th century Welsh flannel maker. Promising next day delivery nationwide. Like, wait, 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 wait. What are we confusing here? We're confusing like ways of saying this is the next great thing. And I just don't think that buy now, pay later is all that in a bucket of chicken. So I'm kind of of having a come to Jesus moment. 
as we come turn into 2022. And I, I think 2022, we're going to see a lot of these buy now, pay later concepts fail. As prosperity is a lovely thing, but when we get into slower economies, I think buy now, pay later could create massive disruption. I'd rather people be able to pay things on credit where they're actually looked at, do they have a job or not versus good intent. That's when we start stretching our our legs too much. So it's a global phenomenon. Things like delivering groceries overnight or in 15 minutes. If you were to look at the venture capital being spent on things that we don't necessarily need, it feels a little choppy out there. I still feel good. I still feel confident. I'm just not into the choppy. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.